Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. And I've had just a crappy day, and I figured I'd make a crappy video as a result of it. So what you're looking at here is a variety of ticking time bombs that I carry inside of my EDC bag or either on my person. And when I say a ticking time bomb, basically what I mean is eventually one of these, at least one of these, is going to bite me. Alright, uh, I've got a Benchmade Barrage, uh, a couple of Victorinox knives, an SE4, and I've got my Pair Ordnance TAC-5, which uh, if you guys haven't checked out a uh, Pair Ordnance with an LDA trigger, uh, put it on your to-do list, it's awesome. But, either way, eventually one of these is going to take a chunk out of me somehow, some way. And there are other items that I have that are uh, a concern, a possible health hazard that aren't shown. Uh, I have a Gerber multi-tool, a Columbia River Knife and Tool multi-tool in here. Also have knife blades on them. They could get a hold of me. Those of you who are familiar with the Mora knives, uh, this is the companion model. Uh, if these things get a hold of you, uh, it's pretty much game over, and you're going to cut yourself straight down to the bone. Another item, <clears throat> which I've actually had this happen, is the Gerber Gator Machete. It's very easy to forget about the saw blade on the back, and you can get a little reckless with it, especially if you're chopping or hacking and you'll take a swing and that saw blade is going to remind you in a very unpleasant way that it's there well of course there is a good way of avoiding infection and all sorts of nasty little whatevers that can come along with uh, some kind of wound that can be caused by any of these items uh, basic first aid now, I've shown this uh, micro pouch. Uh, it's got a couple of empty pockets. The Benchmade and the Pioneer Harvester usually go in here. But I do have some basic Neosporin, some Band-Aids, some Advil. And I've, since my video, I've added a couple of alcohol swabs back here as well. So, minor first aid. Uh, definitely beats absolutely nothing. I do have some other items for first aid in here, including a snake bite kit, quick clot, and this is actually fairly interesting. This is called a tick key. Y'all can see that. And uh, basically, the way it works is if you get a tick, you put the flat part or the fat part here around where the tick is, and you basically just slide it out. Now I've read some reviews on these, and they've all got really good reviews. I don't know how true it is, and I hope I don't have to find out but this is definitely a good option as opposed to uh, picking this up and getting it out the old-fashioned way <clears throat> but in my EDC bag I also keep uh, I've kinda updated this also keep a basic I guess you call it a level one first aid kit and this is gonna take care of most of the injuries that can occur and eventually will occur as a result of any of the items you see before you. So uh, that's what I want to talk about tonight after a long introduction is uh, my first aid kit, uh, my upgraded first aid kit that I keep in my EDC bag. Uh, first off, the bag itself is a lock sack. If you guys want to check these out, it's A-L-O-K-S-A-K. -K. Um, it says up here that it's you know, leak proof, airtight seal, and uh, it was tested and approved by Navy Experimental Diving Unit. So, for all I know, it could have either seen some deep sea action or it could have just meant that a guy packed a sandwich in one and took it on an aircraft carrier. I don't know. But, uh, you could tell just by feeling these, I don't think they're mylar, but uh, they're definitely tougher and more resistant than the garden variety. Uh, Ziploc bags that you'll pick up at Walmart, Walgreens, and things like that. <clears throat> so, uh, let's clear off some room here. 
some of my pig stickers out of the way. And here we go. Of course, uh, got some more painkillers in here. Just a assortment of Advil and Tylenol. You know, just a little something to take the edge off of things. Uh, have a baguette is what they're called. You can find these at Walgreens. This, fortunately, is going to take care of about 95% of your first aid needs. And it's pretty basic stuff. Yeah, I got an assortment of band-aids, some alcohol swabs, quite a few alcohol swabs. Then there's some butterfly closures. If it's a little bit more serious than something you'd want to put a regular band-aid on. I've got some smaller band-aids. Then towards the back I've got some knuckle bandages. Yes, I know that's knuckle. I'm just trying to be funny. And I've got some fingertip bandages. So, like I said, this is going to take care of the majority of it. But there's really no reason to stop there. Uh, you're going to pack a first aid kit. You might as well be ready for a little more than just a simple nick or a cut. Especially if, like I said, if this Gerber Gator, the saw blade gets a hold of you, or the Mora, you're going to need more than a band-aid, trust me. <clears throat> so a couple of other items that I have in here. One is I want to be able to clean out whatever kind of wound I get. Okay, if it's mostly just a scratch, uh, I've got some Neosporin, and uh, these are actually pretty cool. I found these at uh, Mike's Merchandise here in town. These are blood vials, and uh, uh, I've actually got quite a few of these that I'm currently not using. Uh, it's rather unorthodox, but let me step away. Okay, I'm back. So I've got this many that I'm still not using. I put quite a few in my other first aid kits in my bug out bag, my wife's bug out bag, just some other first aid kits. Um, I really have no use for the rest of these. So if any of you guys watching this uh, want to uh, get a hold of some of these for your first aid kits or whatnot, uh, shoot me a message and uh, give me your mailing information. I'll be happy to send you a couple uh, just to get rid of them. Anyway, back to the task at hand. Neosporin, uh, I do have a toothpick taped on here. All this is is really just something I could dip down in here, access the Neosporin and spread it if I need to. Then I've got a couple of more over here in a bag just to kind of keep them uh, somewhat organized. And what I have in these are one hydrogen peroxide and another is iodine. So uh, I've got two, uh, two of my at least preferred uh, antibiotic, I guess you could call it, uh, disinfectants. And uh, they work pretty good as far as cleaning out cuts. So I've thrown a couple of these in here. And I've also thrown in another bag with some cotton balls and some Q-tips so I can uh, apply this to whatever injury occurs without actually having to pop the top and just dump the whole thing on one cut because just because one happens and it's taken care of doesn't mean that that's going to be the end of it. Uh, my luck being as bad as it is I could cut myself once turn around five seconds later cut myself again. So uh, surely I'm not the only one so those of you that are laughing I'm sure that applies to you. <coughs> Sorry I'm in a sarcastic mood tonight guys just bear with me. We're almost done. <laughs> I've also got some of these. Uh, <clears throat> these are, I believe, they were used to be called Tulfa bandages, and uh, they're basically the same thing that band aids are made out of. These are really great if you have a uh, more severe cut, and uh, you want to apply a, uh, you know, just a basic uh, dressing over a wound. You can apply these, and you know, when your blood coagulates and a scab forms. Uh, you stick one of these on top of it and you know you go about oh I've, I've heard different people say different things you go maybe six to ten hours before you do a dressing change and uh, as soon as you peel this off it just peels off no problem uh, now if I were to go ahead and just go straight for the gauze and try to peel these off uh, it's gonna take the scab with it 
and we're going to start all the way over again. Uh, it may even take a little bit of tissue with it, so it may actually increase uh, the damage. So these are my preferred options, preferred option for uh, putting on top of a severe cut. And then I do have the gauze pads in here. Um, you know, the gauze pads, basically all they're going to do is soak up blood for the most part and uh, keep a extra amount of pressure and some uh, extra uh, mass in between uh, whatever cut you have and any infectious germs that are in the environment. So normally what I'll do is throw this on the cut and any blood that gets away from this, I'll stick this on top of this and this will soak up any blood that this one misses. And uh, haven't had to do that yet, but uh, I've, just from what I've seen, what I've heard, what I've read, uh, that's basically a good way of doing it. And of course you're going to need some way of securing these to your skin, right? They're not just going to stay on. So I have a cut up piece of, uh, I this is a Lowe's gift card that I got somewhere. Uh, anyway, I hope it was empty. But I've just got a little bit of medical tape around it. Uh, not very much. You know, I'm, I'm not going to be taping up a mummy or anything, so this should be sufficient, I believe. Definitely going to get me through uh, the five different dressing change options that I have. I have five gauze, five of the non-stick pads. But that is basically it. Um, I know there's some things that I probably could add. I could probably add some smaller or larger pads and uh, I wouldn't mind getting a hold of some sutures and putting them in here uh, because, you know, let's face it, if you're hours away you get a cut where you have to actually sew it up, um, you know, no one's going to be there to help you even if your buddy's there and he doesn't have a suture set. Uh, you're pretty much stuck and all you can do is really just put the uh, bandages on unless I said I do have some extra first aid. I do have a quick clot in here uh, in case it gets that extreme. Hopefully I'll never have to use this. I'm hoping uh, as usual that these things just expire as opposed to actually having to get my money's worth out of them. But guys that's the uh, that's the basic rundown of my uh, what is commonly called a level one first aid kit. Uh, just some basic bandages, band-aids, some uh, disinfectants and just a couple of painkillers to take the edge off of uh, whatever happens and uh, hopefully you know you pack this up and you hope you never have to use it but if you do uh, you'll definitely be glad it's there so uh, I just wanted to share that with you guys uh, maybe give some of you guys some ideas on what to pack in yours uh, suggestions always open for it uh, I'm by no means a medical expert uh, I can get by on what I know but anything you feel that I should add uh, pl please feel free to leave it in the comment box below but uh, I think I've taken up enough of y'all's time uh, thanks for watching I'll talk to you guys later God bless you